idea is what you're doing is you're tapping into these elemental forces to modify the behavior of people. So you're controlling elementals. And that's what it is. Now, to me, this is the most interesting one, is the conjuration of supernatural entities. So the definition of supernatural, right? So first thing that we think when we think about supernatural is, oh, ghosts, right? Or demons or all these things. But let's go and read what it says in, in the dictionary, right? So something that is supernatural is something that is not ruled by the laws of nature. That's it. That's the definition. And we'll see how it plays beautifully. So let's look at how it works. So when, when you're conjuring all these supernatural entities, right? So the first thing in the lore is that what they have is these sigils, which are these basically these uh, signs or these signatures that have the power through ritual to evoke the entity that you want, to cast the entity that you want. So you're summoning these, these signs are used to, to summon the entity, the supernatural entity that you want, right? So a conjure is a piece of paper, right? It comes from conjugari, conjurari, which is to swear together. And this is like when you, when, when people sell their soul to the devil, right? Like, so they write a, a spell and they sign it, right? And then they create this, a, they're, they're doing this conjure, right? Like they're evoking this entity through the creation of the spell, right? Through the conjure. And then this is an interesting thing is incorporatio or incorporation, which is the act of placing in a body or giving material form, incarnation or embodiment. And what I'm going to show you is a, a modern conjure of incorporation. So this is a title of incorporation, right, of a supernatural entity. And let's think about it. What you were saying before, right? So we have the sigils the that evoke the supernatural entity. Now, let's think about what, what is a supernatural entity. It's something that is created or is, is, is ruled by something that are not the, the laws of nature. Well, what other laws do we have that are not the laws of nature? The laws of man, the legislation created by the priests. So something supernatural, literally by definition, is something that is ruled by human laws. So you conjure this supernatural entity that is the corporation. So you incorporate it, you gave life to this creature that didn't exist before and exists in a different dimension. Think about a corporation. Where is it? It's not out of these three dimensions that we have. It lives in the psyche of people. The biggest of all these conjuration is the Leviathan, right? The biblical figure of Leviathan. And now, if you look, this is the, the cover, right? The first page of the Leviathan of Hobbes, right? Where basically what he does, right? is he gives a prescription of or a recommendation on how to create a sustainable and, and long-term state based on fear. So what he identifies in the Leviathan as the driving force of humanity is fear. And what he says is how you have to use this to create the state around it. Now, this is the biggest of all of these magical incorporation acts, right? You're summoning a state here, and think about how it happens, right? You get all these people who feel that they're important and have authority, and they put together a paper and say, from now on, this is a country, right? And we have these imaginary lines here. So what they did is they created this supernatural entity out of nothing through a ritual. That's magic. And then all the signs and flags and the eagle and all the sigils that evoke this creature. So, if you see, the creation of the Leviathan is exactly that. What you're doing is you're conjuring into existence this supernatural entity that rules over us. 
you conjure a demon, the Leviathan, by doing that. And it's magical. It's, if you think about it, it's just ritualistic and magic. Absolutely. And it's the foundation of our society. So, I find this, this poster on the internet, I find it very, very interesting, which, because it's exactly that. You see, the state doesn't exist everywhere, anywhere, but in the heads of people. And as long as we believe in the authority that created this state and that it exists, then we're going to change our behavior and then it is going to exist. Second to last image. This is very shocking, right? So this is the preparation for selection of, on the ramp of the Auschwitz uh, Buchenhall uh, camp. Now look at this picture and detail it, right? Look at how many guards we have in this picture. Four. And, and look at how many Jews we have in the picture. Thousands, right? So it's not brute force what is holding all these people in line. It's a spell. It's the fear. It's magic. Because you see, you cannot maintain a very few people cannot control the rest through brute force. Because it's impossible, because you outnumber them. But enslavement, right, and the believing that you have to constrain yourself and, and follow their authority has to be in you. Enslavement, slavery, is in your head. It's not out there. We live in a deep trance, all of us, and we can help it. Because to be human is to have imagination. Right? to be able to, to form symbols to express concepts, right? to express concepts or to codify uh, and, and create symbols. So, but that is not good or evil, it's, it simply is our nature, but it can be exploited. So as soon as we're able to confuse our concepts and what is out there with creatures that we create and bring into our into our psyche as soon as we do that we have thieves right because then you can start playing games and tricks with the mind of people so that's why uh, Hermes was the god of the thieves as well right because he was language but with language comes the ability to lie right. it's part of language so if you exploit that you can deceive people into doing different things this is ancient knowledge this has been around for a long, long time. And our nature, which is all these spirits, all these gods that we have inside, right? Which are our emotions and our passions. They're, they're constant. And throughout generations, they keep the same. They're, they're immortal. They're always there. And whoever knows how to... Whoever has this knowledge, there are two aspects, right? One is you can use them to control people and exploit people or you can use them for to know yourself to become a real philosopher right uh, now the other thing and, and this is interesting is that magic is used to protect itself in this way right like when you think about black magic and you think about demons and all these things the first thing that comes to your head is this idea of these scary creatures that are going to come and kill you or whatever it is that they're going to do. But you see how they're creating this cocoon of fear around the subject, the very subject of magic and the occult and all these things, so people don't study them because they fear them. And this works as long as people don't know how it works. Because once you know that the hat of the magician has a hole, then the spell collapses. 